How's it going, everybody? I'm your host, Sean, with Paper Planes, and welcome to my Dark Souls DS Fix mod installation tutorial. First off, I want to make sure that we have a clean installation of Dark Souls and of the mod itself. So what I want you to do, if you haven't already, is go to your control panel or through Steam and uninstall Dark Souls. You'll see it here, the Dark Souls Prepared to Die edition. And we're going to right click and uninstall there. It'll load up Steam and reconfirm that you want to delete this. Select yes. And as you see, my Dark Souls is grayed out, which means it is not installed. Okay, so now we're going to exit Steam. And you'll see it's still here a little bit. You just want to click on it again. It'll tell you that it's already uninstalled and then it'll disappear. Now you want to click out of that and I want you to go to this folder here, go to your binary directory where Dark Souls would be. For instance, you're gonna to have to navigate through the Steam folder. Let's see where we are, there we go. Do Steam Apps, Common, then Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. That means that there's still some files left over. Basically, the data file, and that's because DS Fix likes to hang around when it shouldn't. So that's why I'm saying must do a fresh installation and completely rid your computer of these files. Because if you have an error in the previous install, it's not going to go away just by reinstalling the game. You have to remove all files and empty them from your recycling bin. At this point, I recommend restarting your computer. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already and we'll meet up at the next process. Okay, so if you've restarted your computer, we're going to double click on Steam, install Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. Alright, now of course I'm not going to wait this whole time while it's installing, and I've got a really good internet connection, so it's only going to take me a few minutes, so I'll be back shortly to help you guys. All right, everybody, it looks like we're almost done here. Once it completes downloading, it should probably sync up the game. Let's see, I believe if we click to play, oh, it's gonna just do some minor installation setup and then it'll load up the game here. All right, everybody, now that we've loaded up the game here, I'm going to use my controller instead of the mouse. The mouse is horrible in this game. Even if you use the mouse fix, I still don't believe this game was designed with the mouse in mind. Therefore, I'm going to use the joystick controller setup. And I prefer to do that personally in any game as long as uh, you know I'm not competing online against somebody else in a first person shooter or something like that. Okay, so here we are. We had to watch those annoying loading screens. That's something we'll be able to fix once we get the DS fix installed. Now, um, the thing that we want to do in the PC settings is make sure that anti-aliasing is set to off. Now, I'm not so certain what your resolution will open up. If you have never played the game before and you just did a complete fresh install without Steam Cloud saving your preferences, it might show up as 1280 by 720 or something different um, and you might not even have any other options to go higher than that so don't worry about where your resolution is right now because once we set up the DS fix mod we're gonna be able to do all of that stuff and get it exactly how you want to make it so the only thing that you really need to make sure you've got is anti-aliasing off Okay, and even though it says 1920 by 1080, 32 bit with 60 hertz frequency, when I load the game, we will not be experiencing that. All right, so let me load the game here. Let me just jump into random playthrough. And you'll see here we've got a lot of grainy texture, very pixelated, rough edges. I am in full screen mode, so it is stretched a little bit, but 
I believe this is probably 720p performance right here. If this was ten, true 1080p, it would look a lot better than this. You can see here, get a look at the fire. It's all chunky, blocked up. Just not good, not good at all. It looks pretty rough. Character models are poor. Yep, so we're gonna fix that. And this is the main thing, the main reason why you wanna get this mod. It's gonna give you 60 frames per second and it's gonna give you true, um, true resolution up to, I believe it caps out probably at 2560 by 1440. Most of you don't have a monitor that can support anything higher than that anyways. All right, so we're going to exit out of here. And uh, one, you know, once we install the DS Fix mod, we'll be able to get rid of these loading screens where we won't have to wait so long to exit the game either. It's such a poor design, force you to watch the intro screen when you try to leave the game. And you just can't skip through it, you have to be patient and wait. So we'll press start again, and we're going to quit Dark Souls. All right, everybody, we just left Dark Souls, and as you can see here, it is syncing, and now it is completed. I'm gonna minimize the Steam uh, application, and we're gonna go down to a browser, open up Google Chrome or whatever you use, and let's go ahead and maximize this, and we're gonna go to darksouls.nexusmod with an S.com. All right, and make sure that you don't visit this in an incognito browser. If you do this incognito, it will not let you download. You'll get a lot of errors. Okay, so once you're here, you're gonna to navigate to the file section, go to top files and select that. DS Fix should normally be the first thing to show up here. If not, it should be easy to find. Select that and then select the download manual. Now, you're gonna download manually whatever the most current version is. At this point in time, it's DS Fix 201. So you select that and then just click a mirror somewhere close to your area. Probably doesn't matter. Okay, see, I got an error here even though I'm not using an incognito form. So this happens sometimes. Just uh, don't worry about it. Back out of that. Let's go ahead and try Firefox. And we're gonna go do the same thing. Dark Souls .nexusmods.com. Go files, top files, DS fix. And we're gonna go download manually. And let's try it once more. We'll try a different mirror. And another error. You can log into your account. That might solve the issue. Um, I know I have downloaded this process before without being a user. So it might just be something where you can only download it a certain amount of times from an IP address or whatnot. But anyways, it doesn't hurt to sign up. You're not going to get any junk mail or anything like that. So now that I'm logged in, let's go ahead and try it once more. Normally, you would only need to be logged in for files that are over a certain amount of size. And I think that's two megs. All right, so it's going to work this time. Go ahead and download and save and the download is complete. So let's just back out of this and we're gonna open up. We'll go in here and open up my computer. I'm gonna go to my download files, which is Chrome downloads. Even though I did that in Mozilla, I have all my downloads go to the same place. So we can open up this zip folder and we're gonna drag it over here and use half of our screen real estate for that. Okay, now I wanna go back into my computer. I'm gonna 
drag this over here and I'm gonna go into the Dark Souls binary folder so we're gonna go into wherever your Dark Souls and Steam client files are you will go to Steam apps common Dark Souls and then data some of you might not have a data folder your Dark Souls.exe might just be here in this uh, Dark Souls folder itself if that's the case you're gonna uh, copy and paste these files over here or select and drag and drop these files from the zip folder all just wherever your Dark Souls.exe file is as you see here mine is in the data folder so I'm gonna select all of this stuff and then I'm gonna drag and drop in the data folder and all the highlighted stuff is what transferred over okay so once I do that I can click out of the zip folder and now I can focus on editing my dsfix.ini folder or file so just double click on that and we're going to maximize this and now here all you're going to do is change your settings whichever suits your computer your hardware CPU GPU monitor all of that stuff you have to keep in mind and know your limitations so for recording purposes I run the game at 1920 by 1080 so since I'm not gonna change the resolution for the display width and height I'm gonna leave these at zero even though my monitor has a native resolution of 2560 by 1440 when I'm recording I'm usually recording in 1080p or 720p so I'm gonna leave it there also when we go to anti-aliasing you're gonna use the ultra selection because there's really not much uh, difference on your computer as far as strain from choosing ultra or one okay so now we're going to select which type of AA and I'm gonna stick with SMAA on ambient occlusion um, for the SSAO strength you want to select 3 because there's absolutely no difference as it states as far as performance impact from 0 to 3 so why wouldn't you alright and uh, on the SSAO scale just leave it at 1 on uh, determine the type of AO used leave VSSAO as it is that's how I prefer it at least I will change this value here to 810 and that's just what I chose to like through trial and error really just playing the game and, and tweaking these settings as I saw fit most of you probably won't notice the difference if you haven't put in a lot of hours into this game uh, the depth of field scaling override as it says here not recommended I leave it alone specifically when a developer or someone who makes a mod warns you against something you should probably take their word for it alright now we have the depth of field additional blur I'm just gonna leave this at 1 because I like the 540 depth of field resolution frame rate this is a key thing for most of you guys you wanna unlock it to 60 frames per second and to do that you change that zero value to 1 once you've done that, you can slide down here and uh, it uh, only unlocks the frame rate, frame rate up to whatever you select here. Some people can get it higher than 60, probably cap it out about 70-ish. Um, my monitor caps out at 59, so I choose 58 as my FPS limit. All right, and uh, we're going to change this number here. This basically means um, it's going to shut off your anti-aliasing if your frame rate drops a large distance down. So if your frame rate goes to, let's say, 15 frames per second, then it's going to click off anti-aliasing and it'll recover your frames. Once it's above that threshold, it'll enable anti-aliasing once again. All right, uh, you do not need to change this uh, texture filtering override. I don't mess with any of the HUD options. I think a lot of errors typically happen there. 
So I would keep that stuff to yourself and use a secondary mod for HUD changes if need be. I do want to enable the, uh, or I'm sorry, I don't want to mess with this one. I do want to get rid of the cursor at startup because I use a joystick. So I'm going to put one so the cursor disappears. And I'm not going to change my save game backup system. I will, however, enable texture overrides because I plan on implementing new textures into the game. None of you should enable texture dumping unless you plan on creating your own textures. So do not change this value here. Also, here's the skip intro value. You want to make that one so it skips all intros and you don't have to wait through that process when you start the game and when you try to exit the game. All of these other things, especially uh, screenshot and language, you know, of course, change that to what you need it to be if you're going to use it. Um, I don't mess with anything else in this, especially these settings below here. As the developer states, they're not ready to use, so don't touch them. All right, and now before you exit, just click the Save button, and your INI file has been edited completely. So you don't need to do anything else. You can go ahead and load up Steam once again and start the Dark Souls game. All right, and now we are loading up into the game. Go through that standard selection point. As you can see, there's no mouse cursor here. I'm actually just strictly using my joystick. I'm gonna press the start button. We'll go to our PC settings, and you see it's the same as before. Go to OK. And you'll, if you wait a little bit, to the left of Dark Souls, you'll see the DS Fix mod symbol appear there. There it is, it says DS Fix enabled. That's just another way to know that your DS Fix INI adjustments have been successful. So we've had three indicators so far. We've got to skip the logos. My mouse cursor is gone. Those are two options that I personally adjusted. So we know that things are on the right path. So let's go ahead and press start and load up the game. We will join in the same playthrough that I first showed you. And here we are. You can already see a huge difference right off the bat. The textures are so much better and there's no real texture mod. This is just the uh, resolution, the way it should be. And this is 1080p resolution. You can take a look at the flames. Flames are pretty fluid, pretty smooth, no jagged edges. We'll go take a look at this guy once more. He's looking a lot better. Everything looks pretty good. So this is definitely acceptable. This already looks better than the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 version. So you know those guys are jealous already. And we can only improve off of this. So you guys, you must know that this mod is essential. If you play on the PC, you have to have this. Download it just like I showed you. Install it just like I showed you. And adjust the settings to make it optimal for your, P your PC setup. All right, everybody, thanks a lot so much for checking out this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If so, please just click that thumbs up button so people know it's legit to watch it and learn from it and share any experiences or trouble you have below. That way I can get back to you and try to help you out. Thanks again, and don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos. Thanks for checking out my video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel and social media accounts to keep current with Paper Planes updates. Thanks and take it easy.